In the center we are held, deeply knowing, deeply known. Healing wholeness rising up, wisdom inside overflow. Center you hold life indeed, with thanksgiving. You have heard me speak a number of times every week now of the pivotal role of Lauren Archer's Canada Special Ministries at San Francisco Express Cathedral in the 1990s. You know by now her role in bringing the labyrinth back from Shark Cathedral into worldwide use now as a practice for prayer and healing and transformation. Well, if you were here the first week, you saw her in the video telling part of that story. Tonight, I'm going to take you back to 1991 to Chart with Lauren and a group of six from Grace Cathedral, including the dean at that time, Alan Jones, who spoke French, so that was really helpful. Here we go. Many will recognize this is Chart Cathedral. 57 miles southwest of Paris, out in wheat fields. Now back to this image. This is a labyrinth there in Shark Cathedral, built in 1201. You saw that last week. This is a, a woodcut made in the 1600s. And it's really the only image that we have of a labyrinth with people walking on it. It's not even accurate if you look closely at, at the labyrinth, but um, it's an artist version of that scene of people walking on the labyrinth. So I like to include it, just sort of put that visual image in your mind of people on the labyrinth because there's not a lot of those available. Next we've got um, the labyrinth at uh, Shark Cathedral covered in chairs. It was never available to the public and had not been used for hundreds of years. The priests did not consider it a part of modern worship, but merely a relic of medieval beliefs no longer held. Um, you can see the lab from overhead like this. You can see that there's a labyrinth under it. But people often would visit the cathedral and mostly looking up, never realized there was that beautiful labyrinth under all the chairs. And this is the center of it. I mean, the aisle between the rows of chairs certainly does reveal part of it. The center, uh, the labyrinth with the rivets, uh, the rivets once held the metal plaque that I've spoken of that had the image of Theseus and the Minotaur. Mm -hmm. We're going to be revisiting those guys again. But as I told you, that that plaque was removed to make cannons for the French Revolution. These rivets are worn down smooth now after 800 years. and a lot of feet on them. Uh, so you can see that that's really the only portion of the labyrinth available in all of the uh, chairs on it. Now prior to this calling that Lauren Archer's had to pursue the labyrinth at uh, Chart, she had been working in San Francisco with the AIDS community through years of much suffering and much loss. And there was tremendous fear and uncertainty in that community. Well, really everywhere. We remember no matter where we were at that time. And as both a priest and a psychotherapist, Lauren saw that there was a deep hunger for spiritual nourishment among the many who felt no connection to a specific spiritual tradition or practice. And she herself was in need of renewal and went on a sabbatical in 91 to a retreat that offered some non-traditional ways of relating to spirit. And it was there that she experienced the labyrinth for the first time. It had been created on the floor of a basement in painter's tape. And at, as she walked it, walked that ancient pattern, she felt right away that this could be the tool that she needed to serve um, her community and, and her ministry. So she returned to Grace Cathedral in San Francisco. She began to study as much as she could find at that time about the labyrinth. And as 
especially the labyrinth of shark. So then she convinced Dean Alan Jones and four others from the church to accompany her to, uh, to shark, to walk and to study and to measure the labyrinth there with the intention of coming back and creating one at Grace Cathedral. So they rode ahead uh, to the officials at Shark Cathedral, explaining their request, and they got no reply. <laughs> but undaunted, they got on the plane with their tape measures and their clipboards and their cameras and their knee pads. And I don't know if they took knee pads, but they probably wish they had. And they headed off to Paris anyway. And when they arrived, of course, there were chairs covering the labyrinth. And visitors, as I mentioned a moment ago, visitors walked around, they looked at the glass, stained glass and all the architecture and then leave without ever realizing there was this amazing labyrinth there. So Lauren and her fellow pilgrims found no one available to speak to in the office about why they had come and what they wanted to do. But they finally found a cashier in the gift shop <laughs> who explained, it just so happened, that all of the staff were in a private service being held downstairs in the crypt. Ah. <laughs> there was no one to either give or deny permission to pursue their plan. Beg for forgiveness versus giving forgiveness. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so they decided that to accomplish their mission, they would have to be bold. Two of the parties stood watch to offer cover <laughs> or explanation to any official who might appear. And the other four began moving chairs. 256 yeah. chairs. Wow. Wow. <laughs> then they watched the labyrinth with great reverence. Um, but also with a sense of concern about having performed such an intrepid act. And then they got on their knees, and then they began to measure and draw and take photos and carefully document every detail of the 800-year-old labyrinth. Here is Dean Alan Jones. I think he's taking a break from moving chairs there. It looks like he's holding the camera. Um, we've got Lauren Archers down, squatting down, taking measurements. Here she is making notes. Here she is making sketches. That's right there in the center of the labyrinth, and she's drawing it out. So as they were literally near the completion of their mission. An official did come on the scene. And of course, said, you can imagine, who are, who are you and what is going on. So they explained and they proceeded to put all the chairs back, offered their gratitude, backed away, packed up their supplies, and they left. But before leaving Chart, Lauren lit a candle, asking for a blessing on the vision she had for making this powerful <coughs> contemplative walk experience available to others. She wanted to quote her to pepper the planet in the labyrinths. So she goes back home to San Francisco, her cathedral, Grace Cathedral, and she began gathering ideas for how to recreate the labyrinth to use at Grace Cathedral. It was decided that they would buy huge sections of canvas, draw and then paint the labyrinth pattern on the sections, and then Velcro them together. So here they are. La Lauren and others working on this labor of love. Phil crowing. <laughs> Getting it all ready to assemble. And voila! Suddenly, the labyrinth had come to Grace Cathedral. Now, they first made it available in a downstairs meeting room at the church. A brief newspaper article brought many more people than they expected. Well, the word spread, and so for New Year's Eve, 1991, the labyrinth was made available to the public in the nave for 24 hours. The famous and beloved Bobby McFerrin conducted a sing-along called Singing for Your Life, and thousands of people came. The line stretched for blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks in San Francisco. One man in the line was heard to say, at many venues, you have to wait in line to get in at 
at many events, you have to wait in line to get to the venue. But here, the line is the venue. <laughs> there was massive enthusiasm for this labyrinth walk experience. But jumping ahead now to 1994 and realizing that they needed a labyrinth more permanent than this canvas one, the church commissioned a tapestry carpet with the labyrinth pattern woven into it. So here we are, 94. Here you see this 900 pound rolled up rug being carried by about 10 guys into the front door of Grace Cathedral. And here is Lauren looking at it like, mm. it, she's looking, I like to say that she's looking amazed <laughs> at the magnitude of what she set in motion. She looks a lot like the dog that caught the car. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, good analogy. And here she's blessing, blessing the carpet as they're, as they're unrolling it and, and putting it in, in place. And here is a stunning oh, tapestry gosh, yeah. labyrinth in place on the floor of the nave at Craig's Cathedral. This is how it looked when I first went to, to start walking in. Now this is interesting. She tells us that when the carpet was delivered, the um, address label uh, had an error in it. it. It didn't say Grace Cathedral. The label said Space Cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> And in this image with the streamers from the ceiling, it certainly looks celestial. <laughs> so everybody got um, a, good, a good laugh on that. Okay, so the word is spreading around the country, and Lauren is literally on tour with the canvas labyrinth, which they can take apart, fold it up, put it on a plane. And visitors, including myself, came from far and wide to walk the tapestry labyrinth at Grace. Now, on other trips back to Chart, Cathedral, she had become well acquainted with the, uh, with the cathedral dean, Francois Legault. Uh, but he was still resistant to um, opening the Chartres Labyrinth to the public, although he was very respectful of the movement that she had started. He was clinging to his beliefs and tradition regarding his cathedral. Eventually, however, <coughs> With the success of the Labyrinth at Grace, Lauren and others on the Labyrinth Project brought Dean Francois Legault to San Francisco for a visit to see for himself how people were flocking to the church, drawn by this mysterious but compelling contemplative practice. He witnessed the power of the presence of the Labyrinth in the entire community. And he and Alan Jones, Dean Alan Jones at Grace Cathedral, who's in the center there, they felt a strong camaraderie, not only in their dedication to their cathedrals and their ministries, but because they literally look so much alike. <laughs> <laughs> they declared themselves twins separated at birth, <laughs> brothers in Christ. <laughs> and he came around. He made a commitment to set a weekly time to make the labyrinth at Sharp Cathedral open to the public. Fridays, special occasions, but hey, a lot of progress. So here is um, Dean Francois Legault and Dean Alan Jones. There's uh, Canon Lauren Archers, and the, that is Bishop Bill Swain, who ordained Mother Leslie. Beautiful, nice connection. Um, on this trip, to this country, um, Dean Francois Legault also went to New Harmony, Indiana, where uh, by this time an exact replica of the Chart uh, Labyrinth had been built, and he went there to offer a blessing upon it. Okay, 1995, uh, along with some earthquake retrofitting at Grace Cathedral, they installed an outdoor labyrinth. Here is a drawing Anybody who's interested in these kinds of plans? Drawing for the plans. Here is the actual construction of the uh, outdoor labyrinth. And here's the completed outdoor labyrinth out in front of uh, Grace Cathedral. And here is the blessing of it. 
it has truly become a part of the of the community for any any and all to walk. There are special uh, events and celebrations on this outdoor labyrinth. Uh, this this is a, a Chinese New Year with the kids dancing as dragons. Um, musicians come and play nearby the labyrinth, and they uh, sometimes will set up an art room um, for people who want to color in the labyrinth patterns and you know write prayers and reflections and journaling you know around on the labyrinth pattern. Here's an example of some of those works. Well, over, um, uh, over a dozen years now, that carpet labyrinth was getting a little bit warm. A lot of feet on that labyrinth. And so 2007 funding was generously offered to create a permanent marble and limestone labyrinth in the nave of Grace Cathedral. And here it is, absolutely beautiful and all its glory. Here's an overhead shot. It's just such a spectacular cathedral and right in our backyard, so to speak. Uh, these are just a few shots of details, just to show you the precision. Um, these are the lunations. I'll be talking about the lunations a little bit later. And then here's the close-up of the rosettes in the center. In addition to being available for the, for the public to walk, there are many labyrinth-focused events happening now regularly at Grace Cathedral. In fact, it's Tuesday. It's yoga night on the labyrinth at Grace Cathedral. <laughs> yoga night. And um, once a year, this this is the Women's Dream Quest. It's an annual gathering of, sorry guys, women only, to sleep overnight in the cathedral, and they engage in song and ritual and prayers for the earth. Very special event. They've also had a lot of art installations there. This is 2008 exhibit of the boots of soldiers who had served in Iraq. Here is a spring festival with children celebrating renewal of life at Easter time, right there in the center of the labyrinth. And there are also candlelight walks each month. And there are all also sound baths with musicians right next to the labyrinth playing soothing, soothing sounds for those who are live on the labyrinth. And this is a light bath event that they periodically hold. And you lie on the labyrinth, and they give you these little neck pillows, and you gaze up as if into the heavens to experience a glorious play of light. I would like, like, to, like to experience that. Well, and of course, there have been some famous weddings <laughs> in the cathedral labyrinth. <laughs> Famous weddings. That's <laughs> fresh. <laughs> 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 Look at the very top. Beautiful event. I'm sure it was a beautiful event. 